Hello, boys and girls. Today, Uncle Cameron is going to give you a little story about the three little fox wolves. No, seriously. Um, actually, this is going to be a build video. So, sorry if you guys are disappointed. Uh, I saw this online recently, and I thought it would be a really good kit to build, especially because it came with this little bugger. So it actually comes with a relic, a piece of an actual FW190. So in this series, what we're gonna do is I'm going to build three of these at a time. It actually comes with four, but I'm gonna save one for later. I also am going to try to finish uh, the other FW190 that I've been working on. And so I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks as we go along. All right, let's get started. So, I've got my three fuselage pieces all together. Uh, one thing that I noticed is the actual sprue trees that have the three different ones are actually a little bit different. So hopefully this will all go together because uh, as you can see, I just started working on them. Didn't label it or anything until I got to here and went, oh wait, sprue tree E is different from the others. So, Hopefully this will go together okay. Um, from there, I have primed just black the parts of the cockpit, as you can see. And then I have gone in and done the uh, different parts here of the photo etch. And so I just use my technique that I have in the other video that I'll link in here. And... So here's the other pieces of the instrument panel, all ready to go. All right, so here is the instruction manual and it's pretty beefy, but surprisingly, uh, the instructions on it are only a couple pages and then we'll actually have this thing done. So the versions that I'm going to build, mm -hmm. C. So I'm going to do C, uh, JG301 North Germany, May 1941. So I'm going to do that pattern. And then I'm going to do this pattern. And then this one, which apparently is going to uh, require a few special parts. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But... Uh, yeah, all the way up through L. So there's a lot of different marking options that this thing comes with. Plus I've got some extra decals if I really wanted to. But those are the ones that kind of struck my eye. But who knows, maybe I'll change my mind last minute and throw in B. Hopefully not, because that one is going to require a little extra work if I actually do the fuel tank. So to start out, we have the cockpit. As you can see, I've got everything pretty well laid out. My next step is I'm going to be doing RLM 66, thin down, and I'll go through my process as we go through. Okay, so I've got RLM 66, and I've got it thinned maybe to a 20% ratio. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually hit this sure I don't get something else in the overspray. But uh, I'm just going to hit this from the side, hopefully to create a little bit of a shadow. Make sure I got it right. There we go. And get some parts where we get a little bit of an emphasis on it. So that's cockpit, not a whole lot of interesting stuff going on with the sidewall, so I'll just go through this real fast. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, and I'm 
just trying to make sure that I'm getting more paint in the middle than the outsides. Where we get a nice little shadow effect. Like I said, some other cockpits, this would be a lot more interesting. Not a whole lot of raised details or anything that I can have fun with. Okay, so there's that. Now, let's move on to the other parts. So I'm gonna hit this from above so it kind of gets a little bit of a shadow. And it's gonna highlight some of the areas. These pieces on the side is gonna have photo etch on it so I don't have to worry about that. And kind of hit this off from this side. Okay. Make sure I get the rudder pedals. Whoop, a little much. Okay, so we'll touch that up a little bit here in a sec. And I probably should have had the actual flight stick then separately. The last moment I chose to add it on, I'm regretting that a little bit. Now I'm gonna hit this from the side a little bit. So you also get a little bit of that shadow effect. Which will get more emphasized a little bit when we get in some washes. Now, for the seats. There's a couple of ways you can hold this, but I am just going to just tweeze it. Just because I'm lazy. I forewarned you, I am lazy. So there's that one. Get this little guy. So nothing really particularly impressive on it yet, but we're just getting started. Okay. So I'm going to just finish up the RLM 66 on to the parts like this puppy and go from there. All right, now that I got everything all painted up, put these to the side, I am going to put this per piece on there. So, okay. so with the photo etch on here, so I'm gonna cut that off. It's since it's it's got the lower piece of the instrument panel and the sidewalls all together. So I'm gonna put those on and get that going. So can use some different cutters. I just go in with an X-Acto. Cut off those little bits. So let's see how well this guy goes on. So it should be able to just bend it. And yes, I'm a savage. I am going to just use some pliers or some tweezers here to just give it that bend. Okay. 
Okay, let's see how well that fits on there. Come on, Edward. Oh! Fun! Okay, so, as you can see, does not really line up. So, I'm going to have to do some manageling with this and uh, see if I can get that fit on there for the next step. So I'll put these on and then we'll continue. All right, and through the magic of uh, video editing, we are done. Um, it was actually a lot easier to put this on than I was anticipating. It was just that uh, the bend just needed a little bit more bend to it, I guess. So I've got them all on and now we're gonna make sure this thing has a little bit of pop to it. So what I'm gonna do is I already have some thins, our RLM 66. I'm gonna add a little bit of RLM 65 just because it's out. And uh, like I already explained, I am lazy. So I'm adding a couple drops to that. And we're just gonna add some little highlights. Some places where the paint is maybe just had a little bit of uh, wear to it. And maybe I, also to save time, I'm just doing it in the airbrush. And I think I gave it a little bit too much of the 65. So I'm gonna give it a little bit more 66. Shake it up. Okay, so I'm gonna the test piece. Let's add maybe a little bit of chip right here where nobody's gonna see it. Let's see if I got the right kind of color. Okay, once that dries. I think that actually would come out pretty well. If I can actually get it focused, that's the trick. Maybe not. It's a problem with dealing with 172nd. So anyway, you can see a little bit of that in there. And so we're going to just make sure, I think, might be a little much still. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the 66 because we just want a kind of faded look. Just a little bit off color. All right, let's give that a whirl. Hmm. Okay, that might be now not enough. Okay, let's try one more time. So we just want to give it a little bit of a highlight, almost like a chipping technique. Yeah, I think that'll do. So just kind of like a chipping technique that you would use on tanks. And for the cockpit sidewall, what I would normally do is I would go in and I would highlight some of these raised areas. And I like this raised detail, just to give it a little bit of contrast. Now with this, those are gonna be missed because um, that's just attachment points. Like I said, it's a little bit of a boring cockpit. So we'll still add some scrapes and stuff to the side and go from there. So just a little bit on the paintbrush and Just 
just a few bits. This is where there's been some abrasion. Uh, now, for the whole entire effect, we'll have to actually go in and let this dry and see if it's too much contrast or too little. But uh, for sake of education, let's do it on a few other parts here. So now we go into the main and this hatch is gonna have a little bit of wear, right? So I'm just gonna dab onto the edges where you'd have regular wear. Some pieces here, just where you'd have a little bit of extra wear. And some of those right edges. So right now, it you can see a little bit of a contrast because it's wet, but I think it's not enough. So we add a little more 65. Okay, now I think we're cooking. And I'm gonna bring this closer. All right, let's see. Okay, I think that is gonna be the ticket. So I'm just gonna add some abrasion to the raised pieces, a little much there, but some of this is gonna be kind of fixed by when we go and we do washes. So I'm not too concerned if I have a little screw up like that, even though I've got people watching, you know, whatever. Okay, the other thing you wanna do is make sure you get some of this photo etch kind of blended in. So I'm going to add little bits and chips to there too. Remember, the guy's going to be using the uh, control lever over here. There's going to be a lot of different things going on there. His boots are going to be up against this control panel. I mean, the, uh, well, whatever for center column, whatever that is. So I'm gonna add some highlights to that as you would have some abrasion. Okay, so that's starting to come together. The funnest part of all this is going to be the seat. Granted, in minutia scale, this is gonna be a little of a stretch. Probably, uh, now that I'm thinking of it, if this demonstration probably would have been better on a, you know, 132 scale, but whatever. So I'm going to add some more chips here. And then a little bit of little streak right there on the center line. So you can see a little bit of uh, abrasion kind of going on there. And then I'm gonna follow it up with a little bit of actual metal chips. Okay. So there's that. I'm going to add a little bit more to the other pieces and show you the final result. All right. So I've got that all done. Some areas are a little bit better than others. Um, a little tricky to tell on some of this, especially with the focus. There you go. So uh, you can see just a little bit of highlights after it is dried, but you know what? It's still too clean. So we are gonna do what my mom said we should never do. We're gonna make things dirty. So we are going to add some deep brown wash. I might even play around with uh, some kind of black gray wash. We'll see how this works in here. So I'm just gonna use my old dilapid brush and just put it basically all over. Let's just flow into all of that, and don't worry, we can clean up the rest 
we really don't need to be finicky with how much we put on. Um, let that come in. And basically just get it everywhere. Okay, so if I was doing one that actually had some lines to here, then make sure that this got some some wash. But this one, um, the way that it's going to go together, this isn't going to add too much of it an effect. Might add a little bit more to the shadows, um, but. This is basically just going to fit in there, and it's basically going to be hidden. So I'm not going to worry about too much about the side walls in here. I'm going to look at just mainly the cockpit tub. So just on the floors. And if, like I said, if it's ever too much, you can come back and clean it up. For some of your paints that you're going to be using, you're going to probably want to do a clear coat. Um, Vallejo has worked pretty well for me, and I haven't really noticed much problems with it peeling off. Um, but doesn't mean that's going to not bite me in the but while well, you guys all watch. So, we'll see how all that works. So I'm gonna give some to the seats. Just to add that nice shadow. Okay, so I got those. Next up, and you can let this dry, you can do this during, it just kind of depends on what kind of effect you want. So I'm going to add some of these airfield dust pigments, and I'm just going to kind of pinch a little bit in there, but uh, if I do it right now, it's going to definitely stick. Yeah, so I have to clean up a little bit in there. As you can see, I got it on the side walls. A little bit much. Okay, so add a little more. For some of you that go, oh my god, this is too much. Well, keep in mind the guy that's usually going to be uh, getting into the cockpit, he had to get on dirt first, so. Okay, and then just kind of tap it around. Let's sit in there pretty good. Um, we're going to come over. Now, as soon as I touch it with this wet brush, well, that's going to change. Uh, depending on what kind of, if you use like just pretty much just straight thinners, then it can stick pretty well and um, it'll be clean. Whereas if I'm using this brown, it's going to give it a completely different tone. So that's one thing that I'm trying to avoid because I kind of want that color that it comes with. Yeah, just scrape it in there. And 
And one other technique that you can do if you got too much in there is good old... <clears throat> oh, Rona. <sighs> okay. But it's still sticking, so... Mm -hmm. Going to use my Q-tip, which cleans more than just ears. Oh, that, 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 that's good dirtiness. All right. So that's what I've got uh, set now. I'm going to do a little bit more to the, like the control column. Uh, I'm going to probably let that dry a little bit and then get some of that caked on stuff just kind of out of there. Um... And then for contrast, this one I think is just about dry. So I'm gonna make this one just a little bit cleaner. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry and see how she turns out. See if I need to add a little bit more of the dry stuff or if I'm gonna remove from there. I'm going to put this all together, put on the just uh, photo watch seat belts here. Those details, other uh, little teeny details to the uh, cockpit and get that just about all buttoned up. All right, so I've let it dry. So we can take a look at this side here and see a little bit of the detail. Now, when it comes down to our interiors here, you can see a bit of grunge. Uh, so this is of course something where you can Put it to whatever your taste is, if you want it a little bit less, if you want it to be something like it's very much serving in the Eastern theater um, and kind of the Russian front, have whatever you want. So after here, here's the seat. So I am going to put on the seat belts, close up the canopy, and we'll close up the fuselage, I mean. Um, and then we're gonna go on to our next step. So stay tuned.